In order to build theory from practice and to build theory for practice, the reflective practitioner needs to use evidence. And evidence comes in a variety of forms. It can be evidence from uh, the students, uh, both formally and informally. It can be evidence from our own practice um, linked to the evidence from students. And evidence can actually come from others, from colleagues or from other researchers who are researching into their own practice. And we use evidence for uh, a number of reasons. Essentially, um, to reflect on our beliefs and our knowledge and our skills uh, as reflective practitioners. And as such, it requires um, an inquiring frame of mind, a questioning attitude. And then evidence is a source of information for us in terms of um, our teaching and our own learning and is not about um, trying to label uh, students or uh, teachers or uh, education. And um, it's essentially about building knowledge and skills and is a means for us to evidence our practice, to provide justification, evidential justification for the things that we're doing and the developments and changes that we're making. And there is then a, a, a requirement that there's a sufficient understanding um, by the reflective practitioner to make adjustments, to make relevant adjustments to practice. And we can do this through a simple process of evidenced, informed conversa conversations. And we can see this diagrammatically. Evidence-informed conversations rely on three key components. One component is the inquiring habit of mind that an individual has that they bring to the process of reflection. And this is in relation to the relevant evidence that is being used uh, to inform practice and also the relationships between individuals in an organisation that exist, relationships of respect and also challenge of thinking. And so building theory from practice and building theory for practice is a process of teacher inquiry and teacher knowledge building. And these come together in the form of a cycle which promote uh, uh, improvements and ultimately lead to improved student outcomes. And we can look at this again diagrammatically in terms of a cycle and what we are seeing is that the reflective practitioner is looking at knowledge and skills that need to be developed and trying to understand how these knowledge and skills um, can be used and developed over time. By looking at this perspective we can then begin to deepen, to develop our professional knowledge and to revi refine um, over time the skills that we use as practitioners. And ultimately, of course, this means that um, that will lead to improved learning experiences for students. Um, the engagement of students in new learning experiences also will be an outcome of this deepened professional understanding. And for the reflective practitioner, of course, this means that we need to look at the impact of these new learning and these new experiences. Um, what has been the impact of our changed actions on students? And from this, as a reflective practitioner, you can, con you can consider what knowledge and skills do your students then need to develop, which ultimately leads into a new phase of the cycle where we're constantly going through a process, a cyclical process of development and redevelopment. So building theory from practice and building theory for practice is a process of using evidence. And that evidence is, uh, needs to be sufficient. 
and needs to be strong enough and robust enough to help the reflective practitioner move through cycles of development, exploring new approaches and looking at the impact of those approaches on students in terms of their experience and in terms of their learning and then using that understanding to influence new, uh, new impacts and new changes.